Good morning, good evening friends, namaste. Welcome to the orientation program. You know, this is the fourth lecture in the series. So by now you must have understood the importance of identifying the vata, pitta, kapha proportions in the individual organs and uh, how metabolic pathways and uh, ionic pathways and assimilative pathways alter under the influence of these individual doshas. All right. So let me now explain what is now being done under the name of Ayurveda, what is being done is if you identify a heart disease, ischemic heart disease, you know people are giving Arjuna based formulations. Generally the bark of Arjuna is packaged in the form of a, a pill or powder and then it is given. And uh, many a times you know uh, uh, people give Arjuna Asavam or Arjuna Arishtam. But so what is actually happening is, you, what we need to analyze is the proportions of Vata Pitta Kapha in the heart and if you are talking about ischemic heart disease, the cardiovascular system needs to be assessed uh, for its individual components or individual proportions of Vata, Pitta and Kapha. Why? Because if the Vata component, if the Vata component lead to a, led to a heart disease, ischemic heart disease, if it is uh, Vata Atmaja Hrudroga, then you give Arjuna in the form of a Kashayam or a water extraction. Uh, if Pitta predominance led to a heart disease, you know, leading to ischemic heart disease, then you give Arjuna in the form of uh, Ghritam, a fatty extraction or Asavam, a low percentage of ethanol extraction. And if Kapha has been the primary cause of ischemic heart disease, then you give Arishtam of Arjuna, which is a uh, 30 to 40 percent uh, uh, ethanol extraction of the same Arjuna. See, see, you see the syntax that is already given, that's number one. So now today, you know, what is happening is, you know, people are trying to emulate uh, allopathic remedies and then, you know, trying to come up with Ayurvedic biosimilars. I don't think that is going to work and that's not working, isn't it? Uh, that's not working and hence and Ayurveda is, uh, the efficacy of Ayurvedic preparations is not uh, not even near to placebo in many of the trials that were conducted. That's a problem with the current form of Ayurveda which I name as herbal allopathy. You come up with a cure for a certain disease which is not the way you have to do. You have to bring about a balance of the Vata, Pitta, Kapha in each individual dhatus. You need to determine the VPK proportions uh, in individual uh, dhat, seven, uh, seven tissues and also the, all of the 42 organs. How do you do that? I'll tell you later. Now, what is the problem in allopathy? Why, uh, I mean, while allopathy is a great science, there's no doubt about it. We have, you know, in, in, the, in the field of say, ischemic heart disease, we have a success rate of about uh, 45 to 65 percentage in terms of, you know, uh, symptom free survival, you know, ranging between 5 and 10 years. So, which means after 5 or 10 years, you need to again, you know, address the concerns or issues of the heart and then, you know, a repeat bypass or a repeat stenting procedure is going to be very, very, uh, uh, very, very risky. That's number one. Number two is you're essentially blocking the, uh, blocking or agonizing the receptors. Agonizing or antagonizing receptors is a primary pharmaceutical target. You know, uh, even the US FDA nowadays mentions that, you know, if the toxins that are aggravating ARBs are present in the body, then you actually give uh, those receptors, I mean, those uh, ARB receptor blockers that actually uh, 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 compete with the toxins. In Ayurveda, the original Ayurveda comes up with a beautiful response for this. You actually identify toxins, of course. Uh, and what is a toxin? Anything in excess is toxin. Ati sarvatra varjayet. Anything in excess is toxin. Anything of any excess of vata or pitta or kapha beyond this proportion of 1 to 1 to 1 in the individual organ is a toxin and they have to be eliminated. This is called as a shodhana procedure. And uh, if the toxin cannot be eliminated, you know, in, uh, it, it is possible sometimes the toxins cannot be eliminated, then you give a shamana or a pacification procedure. See, this is beautiful, isn't it? Instead, in allopathy, we are actually agonizing or antagonizing receptors because of which you have several side effects of that. Of course, in the clinical trials, you know, randomized control trial, placebo controlled especially trials have eliminated this risk to a major extent, but still the risk of side effects is like really lurking in which each of the drugs that we take, that we prescribe. So, how do you overcome these flaws? You know, in Ayurveda, what you do is the VPK proportions of individual organs have to be assessed. That's step number one. How do you do that? 
there is an Ashtavida Pariksha or a eight uh, eight fold or eight methods of investigation and uh, we you know in our uh, institution regularly deploy the method of Nadi Pariksha the pulse diagnosis and the pulse diagnosis friends is really interesting because it gives an idea of Vata Pitta Kapha in individual organs. L let me get into the physiology of the pulse diagnosis. How do you do that? How do I do that? How do we do at our institution? Is you, you take these three fingers, the index, the middle finger and the ring finger of both the hands. Yeah, with your right finger analyze the uh, left hand of the patient and with your left, finger, left hand you analyze the uh, radial artery on the right hand of the patient. Now applying differential pressures at seven different levels, you essentially get the idea of the uh, dosha proportions in the sapta dhatu, seven dif different tissues. Why? do you think it, it works? It's because you know of the laminar flow of the blood friends and remember from the guidance physiology the blood doesn't flow in a single stream the blood flows in different laminae. At least three lamina are discovered right now but then Raman spectroscopy of the blood flow has given us an idea uh, that the blood flows not in three different layers but in seven different layers. So. Uh, we hypothesize that each layer, when you apply differential pressures at diff seven different levels, you essentially are um, uh, palpating the impact of these individual biomolecules at seven different levels and these seven different levels correspond to the seven tissues, the rasa, rakta, mamsa, medha, asti, majja, shukra, dhatus. And then as I said, you know, when once you, and each finger corresponds to, I mean, the corresponds to uh, uh, a certain data point. You have 21 data points on the left hand and 21 on the right hand and then each data point corresponds to a certain uh, cor certain organ based on our analysis and then we uh, we uh, get an idea of Vata Pitta Kapha by understanding the pulse characteristics. A Vata pulse is essentially a, a slippery pulse. It is uh, snake-like. That's what it's mentioned in the scriptures. It says Sarpagati. The Pitta pulse is bounding, it's a uh, uh, Manduka Gati. Okay, don't get confused with the bounding pulse as you see in uh, aortic regurgitation or when the heart fails. That bounding pulse is slightly different than the bounding pulse that I am referring to. Uh, we'll talk about the specifics later, but this is just a broad understanding of what we are doing what, what, what at our institution. So, the Pitta pulse is a bounding pulse with, you know, high amplitude and, you know, the difference between the, the two notches of the pulse pressure curve is also slightly less in a pulse. Uh, pitta pulse and kapha pulse, you know, comes uh, is a sluggish pulse uh, with uh, the pulse pressure curve has a low amplitude and a larger plateau uh, at the top, you know, uh, and then that's how you characterize the amount of the proportions of the slippery pulse, the bonding pulse, and uh, the sluggish pulse at a particular data point gives the proportions of vata pitta kapha in that particular organ. So that's how you come up with an idea of the VPK 42 fingerprint which is the Vata Pitta Kapha proportions in each of the 42 organs. Once you have this, you then you know give specific diet, specific herbal supplements in a certain proportion that is required by that organ. Each herb friends is has a specific syntax in Ayurveda. Each uh, dosha has to be addressed in a certain way. For example, we just mentioned about Arjuna. How Arjuna Kashaya has to be given in a Vata aggravation, that uh, Vata mediated ischemic heart disease. Arjuna Asava or Arjuna Grita has to be given in a Pitta mediated ischemic heart disease and Arjuna Arishtam is given in, you know, predominantly Kapha mediated ischemic heart disease and this is not just the end. There are 16 different types of formulations of each of the herb as envisaged by the rishis of the past and, you know, um, th this has to be taken into consideration when you have mixed uh, VPK proportion in individual organs. So without going too much into the details, uh, uh, that's exactly what we do. Once we identify the Nadi, based on the Nadi Pariksha, once we identify the dosha proportions in individual organs, and individual um, dhatus, then we give certain formulations in a fo in a format that is uh, personalized for you and uh, applying the initial principles of Kedara Kulya Nyaya and Kale Kapota Nyaya as explained in the second lecture. And mind you, this is not the end of the treatment, this is just the beginning of the treatment. The treatment comprises of 
uh, you know, uh, not just the uh, herbal supplement regimen, but it, it also, you know, uh, extends to the diet, the foods that you should have and you should not have in a certain proportion, in a certain fashion for several weeks, you know, the doctor once uh, at our institution, once he identifies the VK, VPK proportion in individual organs, you need to essentially, he gives a protocol for the next two months. Because at a time, you know, we are pretty much uh, uh, mastered over the technique of uh, understanding or predicting what is going to happen with the doshas in, in respective dhatus for the next two months. Of course, in certain, you know, uh, extreme cases, we might have to, you know, do a follow-up uh, every one month, you know, sometimes, you know, some patients like um, some serious, uh, seriously debilitated or in serious di disease, we definitely will have to uh, me uh, meet um, uh, more frequently. So, the diets are personalized because, you know, uh, the ancient science of Ayurveda gives a clear cut vata, pitta, kapha, fingerprint of all the foods that you have around you. So, for example, brinjals. Brinjals have 65% of vata, 20, uh, 25 to 30% of pitta and only 5% of kapha, friends. So, you have to give your patients a, a brinjal diet, for example, you know, only when you see that he has excessive kapha. If you don't do that, if you give brinjals in a vata uh, aggravated individual, you are essentially promoting more of vata inside the body. So that is how the, 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 the foods that you prescribe your patients is also very, very important. And because the fingerprint of vata, pitta, kapha of the foods, individual foods is already given in the scriptures, we use that data to map the foods that are good for you for, and not good for you and then, you know, they are clearly indicated in the treatment protocol. And now, the, the herbal supplements, for example, you know, if you uh, look at how the disease is uh, different in different individuals, on different uh, conditions, I'll tell you something, a simple cough. How do you treat a simple cough in, uh, in allopathy? You just give a cough syrup, if, it is, uh, if, there is a, if there is a necessity for a mucokinetic or mucolytic agent, you of course add ambroxol or you know, certain mucokinetic agents like bromhexine to bring down the viscosity of the mucus you know, or secretions that are you know, formed in this, uh, you know, uh, especially in bronchiectasis or in several COPDs you know, or bacterial infections. or. Um, if it is allergic, of course, you supplement it with bronchodilators, of course. But then for a broad understanding of how cough, you know, uh, say for example, if someone comes, uh, with you, comes to you with cough in a, in a summer, in a very, very uh, um, hot summer day, you just give him a buttermilk and the cough subsides. Isn't it? Isn't it our observation? In a rainy day, the same cough is treated with, with a certain decoction made up of milk, you know, in which uh, ginger and a bit of uh, black pepper is boiled, isn't it? And you add uh, palm sugar or uh, uh, jaggery depending or honey depending on the severity of the cough. In a winter, on a very cold uh, winter day, the same patient is treated with two more fatty milk with ginger, uh, curcumin, um, turmeric and black pepper added to it and boiled it uh, and uh, you add a bit of honey to the to this uh, ginger tea and then you give it to the patient so the cough subsides so in one instance you are dealing with a cough mediated by pitta in another instance you are dealing with a cough mediated by kapha and uh, uh, in a uh, in, in another instance in the third instance you are dealing with uh, a cough that is vata mediated and you give appropriate remedies look at this don't depend on the symptom and this is what is the mistake that is being done today. You are giving a random, you know, uh, be it uh, Ayurveda, be it allopathy, you are giving a, uh, giving a cough suppressant, which is cough suppressant or antitussives or uh, mucolytics or mucokinetics, depending on, you know, the uh, etiology. In Ayurveda, uh, we incorporate these values of vata mediation, pitta mediation, kapha mediation to a certain symptom and then uh, uh, appropriately customize your dietary needs, your herbal supplement needs and your uh, exercise and uh, your breathing exercises and physical uh, exercise regimen and certain home remedies, you know, which we talk about in the next lecture. Thank you very much.